I haven't had a whole lot of time to spend in the woodshop lately, but in between some other family activities, I've started to do some cartoon character development for another motion project that'll wind up using smaller blocks of wood. I'm now down to the point where I'll need to do quite a bit of hand carving for some more intricate cuts and some finer shaping. I do actually have a couple of carving tools that I've started to use, but they are simply variations on a straight-edged blade. This newer gouging tool that I have from FlexCut really has a well-designed curved handle that fits the hand very well and assists me on getting more leverage with the tool as I dig into the wood. But I'm looking for a tool that can take some wider cuts in the wood to remove more material than this narrow gouge. I mean, I guess I could buy one, but I thought I might try making one with this older and hardly used 7mm box wrench. The width of the rounded cut from this modified box wrench will be just about perfect. <laughs> I really like the feel of this flex cut handle, so I'll snag another piece of scrap hardwood, in this case black walnut, and trace out the basic outer shape lines with a pencil. The handle doesn't really have a single flat spot, so tape helps to hold it in place. Once the outer shape is traced, I moved over to the bandsaw for the first set of cuts. I started my cuts on the side of the small block following the curved handle lines. I went slow and had to make a few small relief cuts as the bandsaw blade was too wide for really tight turns. In the end, I wound up with a nicely rounded blank that I could work with. I decided to do all the rest of the rough shaping on the spindle sander, which actually works really great for me when it comes to smoothing out the inner curves, though I also used it for rounding over and shaping the outer curves as well. I think if you wanted to do a project like this, you could use any number of tools for the final shaping, like with a hand rasp or a curved wood file, but the 60 grit paper on the spindle sander works pretty well for me. I even did a product review on this tool a couple years ago. Link is above. Every now and then I would stop and compare it to the flex cut handle and also check the feel in my hand. When the rough shape was ready, I moved back to the bench for some finish sanding from 150 down to 220 grit, taking my time on the inner and outer curves to remove any of the rough sanding lines. Once it was smooth and felt good in the hand, I was ready for a hard finish. I wound up choosing a spray lacquer finish on the handle because of the fast dry time. And though the original FlexCut tool handle was made from ash, I believe, I think the custom shaped walnut looks pretty awesome. <laughs> Time to make the cutting part of this new tool. So I took this leftover small box wrench that I had and locked it into the bench vise. Starting with a coarse cone-shaped grinding bit, I started to remove the inner flat edges of the wrench, thinning the steel down on the inside of the circle. I then moved over to a much finer grit cone grinder using my mini rotary tool and started to get a sharp inner edge. I also flipped the wrench around to carve out the backside, and then started to thin down and sharpen the outer edges with a thousand grit paper on my mini vertical sanding tool. I've also used the same tool for sharpening my camp axe and some other knives. With the rounded edges in pretty nice shape, I needed to grind down the handle of the wrench, taking it from a wider oval shaped handle down something closer to a square shape so that I could fit it inside a drilled hole. Using the rough grit grinding wheel, it didn't take long to reshape that handle. Finally, I trimmed the tool shaft length with a cutting wheel, making sure to leave enough length on the shaft to securely insert into the walnut handle. Checking the shaft diameter against a few of my drill bits, I found a drill bit size that was big enough to hold the shaft, but it would still be snug. <laughs> It didn't take a whole lot of epoxy to fill the small hole and then lock in the steel shaft. 
The rough grinding wheel that I used, along with the square profile of the shaft, should lock into the drill hole pretty nicely and prevent turning of the cutting head inside the handle. <laughs> that's, that's the plan anyway. I guess we'll see during testing. It took a little extra persuasion to get the shaft down into the handle, but no real problem after a little friendly pounding on the work table. I needed to adjust the angle of the cutting head just a little to align it squarely to the handle, but that was no big deal. Now it just needed to sit undisturbed for 24 hours to finally cure. All in all, this was a surprisingly simple project that I was able to knock out in a couple of hours, not counting the epoxy and spray lacquer dry time. The project turned out to be a nice little break from the ordinary, filling up a sunny but snow-covered afternoon. It really helped to have that sample handle so I could trace out the curvature on another piece of wood. And then it was just the effort to shape, reshape, and check the fit against the palm of my hand. When it felt right, it was right. My new homemade tool really looks and functions fantastic, and now I'm ready to do some more carving work on my handmade Peanuts characters. More to come on that project later. Hey everybody, thanks for watching. We hope you give us a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and leave us a comment. It really does help our channel grow. Stay frosty.